G'day everyone. There's many different note-taking formats in the world, from the outline method, which is the most traditional of note-taking methods, to the Zettelkasten method, which Obsidian is based on, to sketch notes, where we draw out our concepts with graphs, diagrams, and pictures. Each one has its benefit, but more importantly, each one has a use case that better suits it. For today's topic, we're going to take a look at how specifically the Cornell note can be used for Obsidian to enhance our note-taking experience and supercharge your understanding of a topic. Let's dive right in. So a Cornell note is a method developed by Walter Park, a professor at Cornell University, and was invented in the 1950s. Originally called the 262 method, whereby pages were divided up into three sections by an I-shaped ruling that was two inches by six inches and two inches that were separated. The fields that it generated were a title and date field, a notes field as the main body, and a cues field where you would ask questions. Following the lecture, at the end of the note, you would have a summary section available to ask either bigger questions or summarize the notes that you've taken for the day. So a typical note-taking process, as you can see from these three main fields, are the notes and the summary and the cues. The bulk of the notes land, as you would imagine, in the bigger area where you capture what your lecturer, trainer, YouTube video, book, or fleeting thought that pops into your head. As you create these body notes, questions or ideas start to form in your head, and this is what the cues column is for. Your predefined areas can let you capture your questions as they appear, and it's a good idea to capture them as they appear, even if they're answered in the next sentence, as it gets you invested in the note making process. Finally, in the summary section, let you distill your notes and questions down to a couple of key points, capturing the gist of what's on the page. It's completely okay here to not actually put anything, or use it as another area to ask further questions based on the notes you've taken for the day. In any case, you can summarize what you've learned throughout the day, but the power really comes from asking the questions and summarizing your notes as soon as reasonable after the initial notes are captured. So what does this have to do with Obsidian? Well, Obsidian is focused around the Zettelkasten method. Using atomic ideas and linking thoughts together, it's typically a single pane and flows from the left to right, top to bottom. That's pretty far from a Cornell note. Well, in a linear sense. You can use callouts like we talked about in our previous video, which is a good inline way to create those questions and thought processes, as well as summarizing your notes. But that doesn't quite create that viewpoint that we're looking for. Enter TFT Hacker. The Tools for Thought Hacker is a member of the community who develops plugins and experiments to enhance your tools for thoughts. The most recent release is a Cornell Notes Learning Vault, which is a full featured learning vault to help enhance the Obsidian note taking process. You can purchase this content from over his website, which is tfthacker.com forward slash Cornell hyphen notes. And I do recommend you do it. It is a pay what you can afford type system. So the cool thing with a Cornell note is that you can capture a lot of key information with each point being effective in its own atomic obsidian note. My favorite use case for the Cornell is to rapidly take down notes during lectures, and books, and videos, capturing concepts and ideas and asking myself questions as we go. The end of the capture session finish with a summary as soon as reasonably possible, and that's usually maybe after I've gone home for the day. And they make fantastic literature notes or fleeting notes and work very well for capturing questions that are yet to be answered, which could be useful for your evergreen note. My favorite use case is actually sitting down in front of a blank piece of paper, ruling it up Cornell Notes style, and just letting my brain run wild. Not only is it a fantastic use case for decluttering your mind and helping you in your Eisenhower matrix and your focus, but also you often have a number of ideas just bouncing around in there, which may wildly become the topic of your next brain. So let's have a look at how this looks in Obsidian. So part of the first few steps of setting up your vault for Cornell Notes are enabling a couple of key plugins that are downloading a couple of plugins that help enable some of the files inside the vault. Inside the settings, you need to go to Community Plugins, go to Browse, and then you're looking for Template. You can see that I already have it installed here, but you click Download and Install to enable it. Then we need to go to Options and just set our template folder location. Now from inside the TFT Hacker fold, we have a couple of extra Cornell notes here, which are templates. As you can see, he's done quite a lot of work in making sure that these CSS classes match what we're actually looking for in our files. But rather than looking at these right here, let's take a look at what they actually do when coupled with our plugin templater. Let's make a Cornell note. So you can select the left or right, which will create the, the side panel bar on the left or right side. And we'll just choose that here. And you can choose whether a border will be displayed. We'll choose yes. And where did you go? And as you can see here, 
we've created a, new, a brand new note and it's added this front matter. Now front matter is a whole new, uh, is a whole new video. So we won't talk about that too much right here. But essentially what this CSS class is doing is calling the function from our CSS file in the TFT vault for the Cornell left thing. If we change this to Cornell right, you'll see it jump to the other side. You can see that the bracket has moved over there. The border has moved over there. Now the other function here is the Cornell live preview, but moving right along from here. What you would typically do is create a summary pane at the top. You open Templator to create the summary pane and use the add summary to document. This is just a placeholder for now. From here, you would create your note as per normal. I typically like to link to the note above. In this instance, that is my first note. And then I like to call it, put my file title here. From here, we're just gonna go lorem ipsum the law. So I'm at quorum. We'll add some of that there. And then we're gonna add a call out again. But we'll do that with our templates. You can do this with a call out. So we're going to use our templator again. We're going to insert a template modal and we're going to choose a queue. Now this will ask here, so what text are we after? It's the demonstration Cornell note. As you can see there, it opens up as a standard queue. We do that, it pops out to the right side. That pops out to the right side because we're doing a live preview. Click back on it, it pops back in. The other beauty here is that you can add some other things, like first, second point. The other part is that you can take out that and you can use numbered list, and that will go neatly into the side there. And finally, when you're done at the end of the day, you can type in here, we learned how to use Obsidian for Cornell note taking. It was fun. Now you can see in this view, which is the editor view and live preview as it were, that the summary is at the top. But when we click on the read pane, it drops it down the bottom, just like how our normal Cornell note would be formatted. In fact, we can make it more Cornell-like by changing it to Cornell left in our front matter there. Some of the other things that TFT Hack has done is they've created a banner image option in here using the same CSS class. You can drop a banner image in and using that, you can have banner image as a call out with the name for the, the banner Aegean. And what that does is it creates a nice banner across the top of your thing. So what other functions can you use a Cornell note for? Well, first you've got your meeting notes. Let's drop that into preview mode. And you can see for a meeting note, you can have the attendees there. You can have the, the summary as well. And then on top of that, you can side note all of your, your different segments of the meetings as they go. And then finally, you can summarize your action items at the bottom. You can have your new quarterly goals, including a summary at the top. You can get the summary at the top by using a summary top callout when you create the callout. In this document, we've got the right-hand side there. We've got some images. We've got some information there. We've got a very simple example with a top summary just to, to further reiterate some of the power that you can do with the Cornell note in here. A little bit more with watercolors. The other cool thing is that you can put links in the side pane here as well. And then finally, we've got a history of the GNC. All of this stuff comes in the, the Cornell Files Learning Vault. And I do actually recommend supporting TFT Hacker. The link for that is down in the description below. So I hope you learned something here with me today. This was the Cornell note summary by TFT Hacker. Um, not affiliated with them in any way. Note is a really great tool to actually summarize what you're knowing and actually force you to engage with the note taking process, which really levels up your ability to learn and know more about what's going on. Well, with that all said, I hope you learned something here with me today. We had a lot of fun making this video and you can see we've got the new setup. I do appreciate your time. If you like the video, please give me a like or a subscribe. Really appreciate it. And we hope to see you in the next one. See you next time.